Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching the sit down, doing it from home, quarantine because of coronavirus, but that doesn't stop what we're doing. Ari Hursty's here with us. He's a cybersecurity expert. Brand new documentary coming out, Kill Chain, the cyber attack on America's elections. Ari, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm self quarantined I'm not quarantined, so so far so good. <laughs> yeah, and certainly a lot to talk about these days when it comes to public health and certainly a lot to talk about with the 2020 election. So it's a couple months away, and I thought it was pretty cool that you guys went all around the country, all around the world, to talk to a bunch of different people about voting machines, the election process, hacking. What was the most fascinating thing that you guys learned? Well, first of all, uh, we started uh, this movie over three years ago, and this is a follow-up for a movie, uh, uh, Hacking Democracy, from 2006. So th this has been basically for me ongoing since 2005. Mm -hmm. uh, so there have been a lot of things and, and one of the reasons why we started uh, the voting machine hacking village at DEFCON was because everything is so unbelievable. If somebody would try to explain me everything I have learned during this almost 15 years, I wouldn't believe it. Right. I absolutely couldn't believe it. At the, at the time when I was asked first time to file to hack voting machines and people were explaining me uh, because I was retired, I had sold my businesses, I was like, uh, fine, fine I'm, I'm, I'm done. Uh, when people try to explain what is wrong, I absolutely couldn't believe it. I, I told them, well, sorry, uh, this is something, your story cannot be true, there's something wrong, I, I'm certain you believe it, but I won't. And, and so I, I, I refused to do it for over a year. And until I, 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 my conditions were met, uh, which was uh, the conditions were set only that I don't need to do it and people go away. But still today, uh, that's why we are trying to educate, we'll help people to learn the truth in, in, because DEFCON Voting Village is really about education. It's about people being able to learn the truth themselves. So everything is so incredible. And, and there's so many sad, horrible stories uh, which are not because people are bad. It's because people don't have the skills, education, resources needed. So when you think about when you guys were doing Hacking Democracy in the mid-2000s to where you guys are at now, what's the most frightening thing in terms of just the ability for people to hack into our election system? Uh, I think the, the problem, the most, most frightening thing is, first of all, from 2006 to now is nothing changed. Uh, the actual same version of software I had 2005 is still in use. It's, those machines are still in 20 states. Mm. Um, so they're still around. Uh, even the so-called new sold today is in the end of life version of, of Windows, etc. Like just something which in no other industry would be acceptable, not even remotely acceptable. Uh, so I think the most, as overall, it is how outdated everything is and, and how hard it is to make people to understand the, the reality and, and get the warning through that this needs to be fixed or things will get really, really worse, uh, turn to worse. They're bad right now, but, and I cannot even cannot imagine what the worst would be looking like. Um, but I would say that the overall, what is wrong is two things. First of all, the threat model is wrong. Uh, we, in the United States, the threat model was a dishonest candidate who was trying to win, or the support group of the dishonest candidate. It never took into account things like nation state, as things like disruptors who don't actually, they might have a preferred candidate, but the primary, uh, in, in the, the primary reason is just to sow discord, distrust, undermine the system, undermine the democracy. And, and all the other kinds of actors, threat actors and their motivations, which are not selfish, because the, the, the US threat model was only about self-interest and self-promotion, and actually only about the top of the ballot, not about the billions of dollars of bond issues and whatnot, which are laying down in the ballot. Mm -hmm. so, so that is the one thing which is wrong. The second thing is we think that there is an election office, and the election office has an IT department. And the ID department has security people. That's absolutely wrong. Normal election department doesn't have even a one full-time IT person. Zero security people. Not, a, not, a, not even, everything is outsourced. And when we look how much new technology has been pouring in the election environment during the last 20 years, what it should be, 
there should be an IT department which happens to do elections, not the other way around. It is just a, 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 a situation where because of outsourcing, because of lack of resources, it's completely upside down. If there would be a foreign military making a land invasion to US soil, yeah. you wouldn't ask the local sheriff to defend the land. But that's exactly what happens in this area. Election security is a national security matter. And you are asking a local election official who has no training, who has no resources to defend the whole land, potentially against a foreign invader. So that's a very asymmetric, very unfair situation. Yeah, I think you hit on the fact that we just don't know how to deal with this. Like you guys in the documentary have all these clips from people in Washington saying you can't hack into these systems or you can't do this and you can't do that. And it's either blatant ignorance or it's lying. It's the same thing with the voting machine companies. So what is most frustrating when it comes to elected officials and also the people who are behind these companies for the voting machines? So first of all, uh, a lot of people who are elected officials, a lot of people who are elections, uh, local election supervisors, they are good people. They are trying to do their work. They are working hard. They just lack training, information, and resources. That's the situation in, in that area. Uh, and of course, there is the other side of the coin. And the other side of the coin is a lot of the election officials are elected themselves. So there are no job uh, interviews. There's no job requirement. Anyone who wins the election will get the job. 